Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Former NCB manager sentenced for fleecing $34 million. Andrea Garden, the former National Commercial Bank senior manager, accused of fleecing the entity of $34 million over three years, was yesterday morning sentenced to just under eight years in prison following a detailed sentencing exercise. This due to the fact that the variant sentences for the banker who pleaded guilty to all 13 counts on which he was charged will run concurrently. No comfort in Manchester community. Prior to last Thursday's walkthrough by the security forces, political representatives and others in the community of comfort, the era was not living up to its name following two shooting incidents, one of which was a murder. Located in the Royal Flat Division of the Manchester Central Constituency, Comfort has been on edge since 43-year-old mechanic Sean Price was gone down at his home in a section of the community known as Landswood. Price was at his home on Saturday, May 22nd, about 11.30 p.m., when he was killed two days after another man was shot and injured in another section of the community. Police believe the incidents are related and that they are due to a fallout among criminals. We are here on an intervention operation with stakeholders because things are not what they ought to be in the community of comfort. It seems like it is going counter to that. Recently, there were two incidents in the community. Manchester Police Chief Superintendent Gary Francis told journalists last week, We are hearing that there are plans by this grouping that is having this conflict. They were once friends and they have some dispute. As a result of that, they are resolving it in a violent way. We understand that people are calling from outside the parish to come to join the conflict, he said. In a show of high-powered strength, the police and military have maintained a strong presence in the area, with even the Jamaica Defence Force armoured military units patrolling the community. Manchester Central Member of Parliament, Rhoda Crawford, and Councillor of the Royal Flat Division, Donovan Mitchell, who is also the Mayor of Mandeville, joined the tour, described as a social intervention, alongside the security forces, church groups, justices of the peace, and others targeting the restoration of peace. Crawford is appealing for anyone with information to assist the police in restoring peace to come forward. I have always maintained the view that for us to deal with the crime situation in this country and the parish, it requires a collaborative effort. I am using this opportunity to appeal to all the residents of Comfort to share what you know to the police. It is with frightening that just a few weeks ago, it was reported that all major crimes were on the decline here in the parish and in less than two weeks, we have had a murder and shooting, stated Crawford. People are terrified and frightened and they don't want to see the community being unwound by criminal elements, she added. Mitchell said there needs to be a resolution of dispute among relatives in the community. Comfort has always been a place that is comfortable. You could walk through at any time but most recently, some things have been happening. The surprise is, except for a few of the names that were called, everybody here are all family. They have to sit down and resolve the problems they are having, he said. You hear people talking about retaliation. Why are you going to kill your own family? The children are going to be left without a father or a mother, he added. The names being called include 24 men, one listed by the police as wanted, and others as persons of interest. The wanted man, Christopher Silent, is being sought by the Financial Investigations Division, FID. Francis sought to reassure residents, even as he warned criminals not to seek safe haven in comfort. We want criminal elements to know that there is no place, absolutely none, for criminal activities, he said. We are going through and interacting with citizens, giving the reassurance. We also recognize that there are a number of youths in this community. We will be looking at activities or programs in partnership with our stakeholders to see how well we could travel these bright minds into something worthwhile, into something productive from the community, he added. Family members demand answers as woman baby die after hospital transfer. Relatives are seeking answers after 37-year-old Sarita Janice Dennis, who was expecting her third child, died at the Mandeville Regional Hospital Tuesday night after initially entering the Black River Hospital here earlier in the morning. Her baby also died. Relatives said they believe the Black River Hospital is at fault 
for taking too long to transfer Denise by ambulance to Mandeville after recognizing that the patient needed specialized help to deliver her baby. Black River Hospital was the careless hospital because they see they don't have the equipment to help my sister while they never transfer her from the time or contact us that we get a private ambulance to Mandeville. Black River didn't call and say they didn't have an ambulance to bring her to Mandeville, said Tanika Dennis, who is Sarita's sister. I'm not going to blame Mandeville Regional Hospital because not even five minutes from them to take her to the bed, she lost her life. They not even transfer her good. Right there, they had to do the C-section to try and save the baby's life, she added. However, Chief Executive Officer of the Black River Hospital, Donna Brownmiller, who expressed condolence to the bereaved relatives, told reporters last Thursday that the hospital did all that it could. She disagreed with Tanik's Dennis' criticism when asked about the alleged delay in getting an ambulance to transfer the expected mother. I am saying the hospital did all that it could. In terms of the allegation regarding delay of the ambulance, I am not in agreement with that, she said. She, Sarita Dennis, walked in at about 10 a.m., and based on her condition, it was proposed for an emergency C-section. However, after her vitals were done, they were all abnormal. So the internal medical team was called to do an assessment as well. Based on what they found, they recommended a transfer for the patient to Mandeville, said Brown Miller. She said the hospital ambulance was reassigned to transfer the expected mother to the Mandeville Regional Hospital as the case took priority over a patient with a head injury who also needed the ambulance. An ambulance was there because we had two emergencies at the same time. There was one that was being incubated to go to Conway Regional Hospital with a head injury and then the maternal case came up and it could not wait so it went with the ambulance that was available, she explained. She said another ambulance was requested to take the patient with the head injury to Conway Regional Hospital. She disclosed that in following protocol, the case is being thoroughly investigated with an autopsy to be done to determine the cause of death. The family told reporters that Sarita Dennis arrived at the Black River Hospital earlier than 10 a.m. She reached about 8.30 a.m. on Tuesday. She called me at 9 o'clock and told me she was feeling pain and that her head water burst. She called me again about 11.48 a.m. and told me that they are going to take her to the theater, said Tani Dennis. At 10.03 p.m., Mandeville Regional Hospital called and they said she was having complications with breathing, so if I could come to Mandeville. I said, get to me straight. She passed away, the nurse said yes, added Dennis. Nicole Barnes, the baby's father, said he had last spoken to his partner Tuesday evening. The last call was 6.11 p.m. She tell me said the baby all right and she all right, but she in a pain and that she was waiting for the ambulance. She was waiting on an ambulance from the C-section delay in the morning. All I know is when she reached a mandible, she was dead, he said. He said the family met with hospital staff on Wednesday to get details on Sarita's death. The relatives are devastated and finding it hard to come with terms with her passing, which has left a nine-year-old boy motherless and Sarita's 18-year-old daughter in mourning. She was loving, caring, kind-hearted. She would just take out her heart and give you anything she has, the dejected sister said. From Tuesday night when I got the call, I can't sleep. I can't eat. I am just depressed and crying. I cried until my eyes swell, she added. Barnes shared similar sentiments as he is in disbelief. Me lose me lover. Me have nobody else to talk to. We were always there for each other. Me can't believe I'll know, he stated. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.